Uh, Hertz, this weekend, uh, Sandy mentioned it before you left for the World Juniors, uh, the importance of, in your non-conference record, of, of picking up two wins. How much of an emphasis is that this week, of, of needing two wins uh, to get that non-conference record back to 500? Well, I think that's uh, it's important every weekend to set the, set the stage for trying to get two wins. I don't want the boys to be gripping their sticks and, and that be the only thing they think about, but you know they 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 read the stuff you know so do we all and and they know it's important and i guess our job this week is to make sure they're not gripping their stick too much and they're they're relaxed enough to just know that the the task at hand is very important just like every other weekend but uh this will be the first year in how many that our, our non-conference record isn't where it had been uh, you know and and i think that uh, the boys are a little frustrated with that and as our, our staff at times but i think they'll they'll take it the right way and, and they'll move forward in the right direction because of what this team has gone through the last two years and rounds the national championships, we're talking to to Nick. You know, uh, the first one there, you guys just squeaked in last year. You guys were so good, not conference play. Never really had to think about um, whether you're getting in the tournament or not. It does much have to be said? I feel like you have a lot of guys who who know the pairwise and and what it, you know what's required to get in the NCAA tournament pretty well. I guess I don't mind the fact that they're out and they, and they know our situation. I don't like them thinking about it too much. You start thinking too far ahead, you forget what's right in front of you. And I think that our guys need to focus on this weekend, focus on getting their game back from where they ended off, especially after a decently long break. I know they focused on their grades. They, their grade reports were, were good and we're really excited about that. So I think the guys took a step in that direction. But I, I, I don't, they all know it, you all know it, we all know it. I don't think they need to sit there and, and dwell on it and start thinking about national championship runs. We've got to make sure we just work weekend by weekend, game by game, and practice by practice for that matter. What, what are the challenges when you're coming off long holiday breaks like this and, and getting back into you know, important games? Well, I know that they, all the guys, they do skate, you know, and, but skating out in rink riding in Hermantown Rink or going to skate with your buddies or playing an alumni high school game is a lot different than what we're trying to accomplish out here. We went pretty hard today and, and I think it's uh, blow the tubes out a little bit and get the Christmas turkey or whatever they have for Christmas out a little bit but I think when you get into a hard practice like that the first day back it kind of resets you a little bit and I think I heard Nick talking before and I think it's real important that the guys did have that break. We all needed a break as did you all. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is this time of year. Uh when we were talking, Zach and I had a Scott on, a, on our podcast, and, and one of the things he brought up, for him to go do this World Juniors, he needs support from, from Wendy and that back home, but he also has to have you know strong support back here at, at UMD. What does it mean for you that, that Scott, two years in a row now, is, is willing to, to leave the program with you and, and, and Krause and, and that here uh, and, and run things while he coaches Team USA? Well, I think it's important, and we addressed it with the guys today, and I think it's very important for the guys to understand that Adam and I are still assistant coaches, and our situation put us in a spot where um, we're going to have to make decisions like Scott does and for the betterment of the team, but we still want to make sure the guys know we're not trying to be Scott, we're not Scott, but we still have a job to do, and we've been preaching since the beginning of the year and every year that we're, we're one group, one family, one staff, you know, and, and, and I think that it's important for them to know that Adam and I aren't trying to change and we're not going to change and we're not going to become yellers and screamers or anything different. We're, we're just, we're all in it together and um, there still needs to be the player assistant coach lines of communication and they, just because we're, we're calling the shots behind the bench, I don't think that should change because then you, the, the di dynamic when Sandy comes, is it's, comes, it's different again, right? And, you don't want to give mixed lines communications to the kids. I think that doesn't help them, doesn't help us. So we're just trying to make sure that the only thing different that I'm going to be doing behind the bench is saying who goes out next. You know, and it's fortunate for me that you know I, I embrace the challenge. Obviously, it's nice to feel like a head coach again. But I've been there before. I've, I've been a head coach, and I know that how stressful it is. And I know um, how you feel you got the weight of the shoulders on your back, and you know, you you want to do the best you can so your boss is proud of you now. You know what I mean? It's, but at the end of the day, it's a hockey game, and, and you can write any action all you want. But at the end of the day, the boys have to get it done. And that's with every game, every situation. Scott's going through it now. He's got some of the best players in the world on his hockey team. Hockey hasn't changed. At the end of the day, his players are going to have to get it done. Right? So we're all going to go through it this time of year. It's exciting for Adam and I. And I'm really excited for Adam, too, that he'll get a chance to do just a little bit more. And I've kind of given him a little bit more this week to kind of expand on his, his coaching experience. Like I'm, he's not just going to do penalty kill 
anymore. He's, he's going to look, and I want him to look at the power play. I want him to look at the neutral zone, and I want him to watch more video, and, and we're going to decide together to make him feel more part of it. How much have you seen him grow since uh, the trip to Arizona last year uh, when you and him were running things to now? One thing about Adam is he's an extremely hard worker, and he's very, very passionate about the program. Obviously, he played here and he grew up here, you know. And I think that you know, I, I take it from the recruiting side when he goes out and a player just says no. Adam takes it to heart. Like he, it's like he's devastated, like someone stabbed him in the chest. And and that's how I was when I first got here. And it's it, to settle him down and say it's part of our process. When we get a kid, he's told other schools no, and it's just part of what we do. But he used to get really amped up and and frustrated, but. And like there's always players, and we all, we want the ones that want to be here. So for that part, he's grown a lot. But the, just his work ethic and his care for the program, you know, whether whether it works out as far as getting, like I said, getting players or not, his work ethic and care, I, I think it's going to take him to levels unbeknownst to him that he even knows about that he could go and coaching if he wants to. Hertz, you mentioned the pressure of when you're in that head coaching position. Do you put extra pressure on yourself on, on weekends like this when you're running things? Do you, do you have to fight that at all? What's no. that like for you? No, I, what I mean by pressure is you want to do well. You want to make people proud of you when you're in a situation like mine. But at the end of the day, you only have so much control. And that's, that's a frustrating part is, is being any coach head system or in a system and you're running the power play. You know, I tell them what I think they should do in the areas they should exploit. If they don't do it, what am I, I can't put the skates on. Right, so it's the pressure of making sure you give the kids the right information. It's, it's not pressure of wins and losses. Obviously, we know what's at stake, and that's not going to change. So whether I'm worried about it or not, it shouldn't really matter. What does Ben Alquist bring to this team? Well, like Matt and I talked about last week, I think Benny, um, he has the ability to play different positions, and I think that's important for us. Um, He's, he's a little bit Kobe Rothish where you don't expect him to blow guys up and, and have the big hits, but he's, he's smart enough to hit through hands. So I think for, for him, he can score, which, you know, whether it happens this year or next year or the year after, I think we can rely on him in the future to have a chance to score goals for us. Um, obviously, he's a great student and a great kid, and he's got ties to the Northland, which I think is also important, and he wanted to be here. That being said, uh, I think that the... The fact that he's here right now will make every day in practice more of a trial for a lot of guys. I think the competition within the competition for ice time and pecking order within the team, I think it's very huge. And I think we've been lacking that this year because of injuries where guys just knew they were going to play. Um, guys might get a little hungrier right now. And I, and I think that's really important for this team moving forward. How important is that? You know, we saw that last year down the stretch when Jackson got sick. And Jesse had to step in. It's you know, it does happen once in a while. You yep. don't have you don't have a set lineup. You know every game you're you're making changes and, and guys have to be pushing. They have no choice. That's their job. When you're when you're in athletics, <laughs> I'm just going. If you decide to play hockey, there's there's only one way to play it, and that's to push it to get better. And and that's their part of their scholarship and their commitment to our school is that they're going to push to be great every day. And you need people to push you. It's hard to push yourself every day. But people pushing you, and if you're competitive, like most kids in athletics are, you're going to take that challenge and want to move forward. The kids that don't and are just happy for where they're at, they end up falling behind. And that's just the way it is. Jason, did you have any head coach? Uh, there weren't a lot of opportunities out there. I know this, this summer not a lot of openings, but did you have any head coaching? And schools reach out to you at all after two national championships? Well, I've, had, I've had a couple reach out. Um, I reached out to one. Timing wasn't great. I still... You know, I love it here, obviously. <laughs> I've been here longer than anywhere I've ever been. Um, the fact that my kids are here and they love it here, and, and my daughter's getting married this, this year to a guy from here, and we just moved houses, and my wife's got a great job, and it's like, what's to be in a hurry? It's got to be a good situation and, and when I'm ready for the challenge. What is that like? All of, you mentioned this is the longest you've been anywhere. How nice is that? How different has that been in, in your coaching career to, to, to find some stability with, with the family? and that? Because that's kind of part of the coaching gig, is, especially in your younger days, you, you move around so much. I, I feel this program, and maybe it's why it's had the success, a lot of stability with the staff here. When guys come here, they stick around for a long time. I think that's hugely important because if you look at the, the classes and you get kids for four years and if kids get different messages, two of the four years or three of the four years because of people it's a revolving door 
who do you believe in and what kind of culture are you creating? You know, I think that's what Coach Sam has done, done a great job. He's moved guys on, but guys haven't been in a hurry to move on. They haven't been trying to get out of here, and I don't, I, I don't think I'm any different than that. If a great opportunity comes around, I'll, I'll, the first guy I'll talk to is Sandy. You know, and then I'll talk to my family if, if we think it's a good move. Yeah. But that's, that stuff takes care of itself. Sandy taught me that if you're out just looking for jobs, you're just that guy. And I'm not. I, like I said, I got a great, I've got a great job. And the best time to look for one, I guess, is when you have a great one. But uh, I, that's not even in my mind right now. My mind is trying to make sure these guys are ready and focused and understand the hornet's nest they're going to be going into. Who's got better control on a slap shot, you or Wolfie? Me, of course. You? Okay. No question. It's not what he's It's not even close. <laughs> it's not even close. <laughs> Seems like a skills competition we could set up. <laughs> I'll do that with Wolfie all day long. <laughs> Who's equipment manager this weekend? I don't even know who guards you. I haven't even been back there. I've been sitting in my office doing video. <laughs> <laughs> I've been just worried about practice. Um, I know Garnsey's helpers are back there, and they're working with the guys, and I've basically been buried in my office with Adam. And it's a just, question I got on Twitter this weekend. Uh, yeah. I don't have Garnsey. That might be the biggest loss of the week. <laughs> it might be. You know, I, anybody we have, like, I know they don't ever get mentioned, but anyone that helps Christian with just a little day-to-day -day stuff here and all the guys that Garnsey has helping them, our guys love them. They do a great job. Sometimes there's like any other college kid they need a kick in the butt now and then. But overall, they, like I said, they're part of us. Like we're not as good when they're not as good. So we, we make sure that they're on task, and you know, that's that's just how we roll here. Someone's gonna get on that bus. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. Someone's getting on the bus, and someone's doing their job, and yeah. I'm not gonna get in the way of them doing their job. They're not gonna be coaching, and I'm not gonna be sharpening skates. So <laughs> they can do their jobs. So kind of touching on something you talked about at the beginning, you know, yeah. these guys have had kind of a long break where they got out and, you know, kind of maybe just did something that they did when they were kids and just kind of enjoyed hockey mm -hmm. or just playing with the guys. You know, is that important for them to go through the rest of the year? I think it's hugely important. I needed a break. And, and it was nice to be at home for a couple of days. It was nice to put my feet up and, and do the things I grew up doing. Like I was out in the woods and, you know, my new farmyard and, and things like that. I just, I, I just, the best example would be Dylan Sandberg. He hasn't been home for Christmas in the last two years. He hasn't played in the Hermantown alumni game uh, in the last two years, and he's right out of high school. You know what I mean? Like that stuff like that. Like uh, I do believe he went bow hunting over the break. Dylan grew up doing that every day, and he's been at the World Junior Championships the last two years. So him hitting the reset button's huge for our team, and him getting you know like just look at the whirlwind that young man's been through. So his is the extreme. <laughs> Mine, because I don't have to play the game, is probably the, the low end. But everyone else in the middle, I, I think it's a huge reset button. I, I do, because let's not get ourselves. Our team's been up and down. We've been inconsistent. Our guys are trying hard, and I get all that. But at the end of the day, the results are inconsistent. Uh, the successes on little area structure things in the game have been inconsistent, and it's just time for a reset.